know only like 12 or so hours to digest the end of the season at this point, but how, how would you, I guess, describe the season from your point of view? Yeah, um, you know, it's something that we're probably going to, you know, spend, you know, so well, we won't, we're going to spend more time going through, but I just think as a whole, you know, and I told this to, to most of the guys today in the exit interviews, it, it just felt like, you know, after the success we had last year, um, coming into the start of the season, there was, you know, a sense that, all right, we're, we're a good team. And I think it took a while for us to understand that even though you're a good team, you have to show up and you have to give that um, consistent effort every single game. Um, and I think that's what we saw uh, at the first half of the season. Second half of the season, you know, I think they, they told me the, what, 26 and 14 or something, we finished the last 40 games, you know, and, you know, that we feel we were closer to that kind of team than we were the first half of the season. But I just, you know, it felt like we we just didn't show up and give that effort every single night the first half of the season. And that, that's different, disappointing. But the bright side is we learn from it, and, you know, hopefully we won't have to deal with that again moving forward. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the, that, those are certainly f things that, you know, factored into the slow start, no doubt about it, you know, the short turnaround. But, you know, we still have to go out and play the games. You know, we, we, have, a, we have a roster full of guys, even though five guys, that means we still have ten. Um, so you can't use those as excuses. Um, um, and we're, we're certainly capable of going out there and being competitive. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll learn from it and, you know, we'll get better. Well, I, I, you know, I wouldn't say one series. You know, Miami is obviously a very good team, a very good defensive team, and you know they had a, a game plan that proved to be effective. Um, you know, we, you know, Miami is a great example. You know, Miami was in the finals two years ago. Last year, they got swept in the first round of the playoffs. Um, you know, so and I, I told all the guys that this year as well. Like the NBA, for the most part, is not linear. Uh, it's ups and downs. You know, each season has its own its own life, so to speak. Um, so, you know, we're always going to look to improve. Um, you know, this series, you know, Miami's a lot like Milwaukee in a sense, right? they very physical, big defenders. Um, so we saw that last year. So um, a switching defense, you know, th those are things we have to continue to get, continue to work to get better at. One of the guys you added, DeLon Wright, how do you assess his performance this last stretch of the season? Uh, I'm a big fan of DeLon's game. I always have been. You know, he's he's just one of those guys that just knows how to play basketball. He's got a great feel for the game. He's got great natural instincts. You know, one of the reasons why he really stood out in the Miami series is, you know, he, he'll go to the offensive glass. Obviously, defensively, he did a great job against Tyler, Tyler Hero throughout the series. Um, but he makes those little plays, those winning basketball plays. Well, what what I told him today, to me, the, really the the one thing he has to get better at is defensive rebounding. He's got to become a more dominant defensive rebounder. And I told him, if you do that, you know, you have the potential to be an all defensive uh, performer in this league with his ability to block shots, with his ability to switch on pick and rolls, with his ability to guard on the perimeter. So, once he improves that area. Um, and it's something he can do, right? He's a great offensive rebounder, so we know he can go get it. Uh, um, it's just actually doing that. So that that's a real big focus for him. And then on the other end of the floor, I, I do think that he's going to have the ability to make mid-range jump shots, you know, and hopefully over time you can stretch it out to the corner threes. Um, and that's one of the things he wants to work on this year, this summer as well. Well, I don't, I don't think it's uh, any secret that he, he didn't have his best series. Um, but again, you know, they, they made him the focal point and they made it really tough on him. Um, but Trey's a competitor. Uh, the one thing I know about him, he's, he's going to go back and he's going to work his tail off this summer and come back a better player next year. And do you feel like there's anything that the team can do to kind of make sure that method isn't successful in the future? In the 
Well, yeah, I mean, I think you, you saw us starting to adjust to what they were doing as the series went on, um, you know, bringing Trey off the ball, letting him come off screens from the baseline up as opposed to just dribbling up the court and letting them be set on him. So, you know, things of those nature, that nature, you know, one of the things we can certainly do. Well, yeah, no, I mean, well, listen, we're, we're always going to look to try to make the roster better. Um, you know, last summer, um, a lot of our guys, you know, were under contract, you know, had multi-year deals. Um, you know, this summer we have some more free agents on the, on the roster. Um, so, you know, there probably will be more turnover just because that's the way the NBA works, right? <laughs> Change is the only constant in the league. So, um, but yeah, I, I do think from last year um, to this upcoming year that there'll be more change than there was the previous season.